postmortem lesions in hs in chip and goat only uh, hemorrhagic septicemia it's a bipolar organism it is transmitted through air water feed formates in case of hs organ which is affected predominantly is the lung lungs are mostly affected followed by heart so the toxins which are circulated into the circulation that may lead to the damage to the vascular endothelial cells and that lead to the changes in the different vascular uh, endothelial cells of the uh, other parts of body but mainly while doing the postmortems we are getting most of the lesions they are limited to lung and heart and sometimes whenever there is a change in form of that hs we can see the hemorrhagic type of lesions in the intestines so here basically lung heart and sometimes intestines are involved in the uh, hemorrhagic septicemia in case of sheep and goat we can classify uh, different uh, lesions of pasturellum based on the observations we can classify into per acute form in that case we can get pinpoint hemorrhages on the lungs enlarged lungs then the severe condition of lungs and heart serous fluid can be present in thoracic cavity and pericardium so these are the simple postmortem lesions we can get in the per acute form the next form acute hs the incubation period of acute is little bit more uh, around 3 uh, to 4 days or up to 1 week but in case of per acute case or the per acute hs the incubation period may be the 1 or 2 days without showing any symptoms animal may die in case of per acute hs but in case of acute cases uh, acute hs animal can show some of the symptoms like uh, high fever is there a coughing is there salivation is there accordingly we can find the different postmortem lesions these postmortem lesions includes the focal or patchy pneumonia then hemorrhages edema congestion of the lung pinpoint hemorrhages and echoidic hemorrhages on the epicardium and endocardium then fibrinous clot can be present in the pericardial sac then fibrinous fluid may be present in the uh, thoracic cavity froth can be noticed in bronchi and trachea early stage of consolidation can be seen and pinpoint hemorrhages on the intestinal mucosa whenever the intestines are involved so focal patchy pneumonia hemorrhages edema congestion of the lung pinpoint hemorrhages uh, pinpoint and echoidic hemorrhages on epicardium and endocardium fibrinous clot can be present in the pericardial sac fibrinous fluid can be present in the thoracic cavity uh, froth in bronchi and trachea early stage of consolidation can be seen and whenever there is a involvement of intestines we will get the pinpoint hemorrhages in the mucosa of intestines now chronic case chronic hs uh, these type of cases are more uh, predominantly observed in the field field conditions the animals are showing uh, long standing coughing long standing salivation and whenever we are doing postmortem of such animals we are getting consolidation of the whole lobes of the lungs or the few lobes of the lungs then marbling can be observed fibrinous material can be present in the pericardial sacs there sometimes there are uh, adhesion of fibrinous material to the pericardium to epicardium then fibrinous material can be present in the thoracic cavity enlargement of the thoracic lymphatics ecchymotic uh, ecchymosis on the uh, epicardium and endocardium so these are the lesions can be observed in the chronic hs now we can see one by one different postmortem lesions in the different types of the uh, hs so per acute hs we can see the enlargement of lung is there and we can see some of the surface of the lung we can see the pinpoint hemorrhages throughout the surface of the lung and the congested blood vessels we can see the small small blood vessels of the capillaries they are dilated one when that we can call as a congestion of the capillaries another case of per acute hs enlarged lung along with the pinpoint hemorrhages and congestion of the blood vessels acute hs we can see enlarged lungs with the congestion and pinpoint hemorrhages Uh, again one per acute case of the hs we can see enlarged lung congestion and pinpoint hemorrhages here we can see the capillaries are much more uh, engorged one or the congestion of capillaries or congestion of blood vessels can be seen over the surface of the lungs then again one of the case of the per acute case we can see pinpoint hemorrhages we can see the congestion over here from here we can see the acute hs acute hs is characterized by the salivation frothiness is there around the uh, mouth so when we are doing the postmortem in that case we can get the trachea is completely filled with the froth and froth may contain some of the fibrinous clot uh, or the just it is it is a simple froth can be seen in the tracheal lumen then severe congestion of the tracheal mucosa here again we can see the tracheal mucosa is congested one you can see this little bit reddishness because of the uh, fraud we are not able to see the exactly the mucosa but the redness is there the in case of acute hs the trachea is filled with the fraud the similar type of fraud can be pre present in the bronchial lumens the same same type of picture over here uh, the acute hs fraud in trachea and bronchial lumen 
then acute hs uh, it is characterized by again the enlarged lung uh, with the congestion pinpoint hemorrhages and patchy consolidation there are some patches they are developed in the lung tissues and that can be early stage of the consolidation in case of acute hs uh, we can see the pinpoint hemorrhages over the surface of the epicardium we can get pinpoint as well as ecchymotic here sometimes we are get we are getting the pinpoint hemorrhages uh, small small hemorrhages we can see and ecchymosis you can see the throughout the endocardium we can see the extensive type of hemorrhages that is called as a ecchymotic type of hemorrhages again here we can see the patchy type of pneumonia or the patchy type of consolidation here we can see some of the portion is a impacimatous but around that we can see there are different uh, lobes of the lungs they are affected and they are the consolidated type of lobes are present there is a progression of disease we can see there is a change in the area of the consolidation the area may be the smaller they be, become a larger and as the stages or the chronicity of disease is increased we are getting the more and more area is affected by the consolidation or the diffuse type of pneumonia can be seen in case of the chronic type of hs so can be seen the patchy type of material or the patchy type of consolidation in the acute hs acute hs is also characterized by the presence of the fibrinous clot in the pericardial sacs sometimes it get attached to the epicardium but it is basically present in the pericardial fluid so it is a fibrinous type of material present over the surface of the epicardium or the it is present in the pericardial sac now acute hs once again you can see the different lobes of the lungs they are uh, showing the different pathological alterations some are congested some are consolidated some are impacimatous so these are the uh, progression of the hs that can be seen in that particular case as the chronicity increase we can see the areas of the uh, pneumonia or the areas of consolidation is get increased here again uh, we can see the more uh, predominant area is occupied by the acute hs from here we can see the chronic type of hs so based on the duration of illness and uh, different observations in the lung tissue we can classify it as a chronic so in case of chronic type of hs we can get a larger area of the lung is affected the, and that is the consolidation we can see severe inflammation is there we can see this type of lesions in the chronic type of hs again the same thing over here we can see the multiple areas they are consolidated over here uh, is much more affected over here again the same the area is much more affected uh, another side of lung is affected by the consolidation of the hs chronic type of hs it showing the consolidation consolidation in the bigger areas of the lung the another peculiar picture or the peculiar findings in case of the chronic hs is a presence of marbling so marbling so these are the marbling like marbles are placed on the floor and the cementing material is in between so like these are the pieces of the marble and in between cementing material is there in the same fashion we are getting the the consolidated portion of the one lobe and it is lined by the some uh, fibrous connective tissue or the fibrinous masses or the uh, basically as this is the gram negative organism it is characterized by the fibrinous type of inflammation that's why we are getting large amount of the fibrinous material is accumulated in between the lobes again here we can see the marbling stages or early marbling we can say the fibrinous material is present uh, in between the lobes here you can see the clear cut marbling uh, though each and every lobe is separated by the fibrous connective tissue or the fibrinous masses and we can we are getting the different small and some are the large areas of the uh, lobe of lung they are affected infiltrated by the fibrinous type of material these are the thing but the marbling of the lung here again we can see the marbling uh, present over here the different lobes of the uh, lungs are affected and the areas are showing the consolidation and the lobe is surrounded by the fibrous connective tissue or the fibrinous masses that is the uh, typical uh, we call as a marbling of the lung on the cut section in marbling cases we are getting these type of fibrinous masses in between the lungs and pinpoint hemorrhages or the severe congestion can be seen but the classical finding is the presence of fibrinous masses in between the lobe of the lung so that typical observation that is called as a marbling of the lung these are the postmortem lesions thank you thank you very much